we've got some news just coming in, actually, that the Salomon Brothers building in New York, right in the, uh, the heart of Manhattan, has also collapsed. There were very few people in the Salomon building when it collapsed. I mean, th there were, I suppose, fears of possible further collapses around the area. That's what you would hope because this whole downtown area behind me has been completely sealed off and evacuated apart from the emergency workers. That was done by the mayor, Rudy Giuliani. That building right there, the brown building, the tall one, is number seven World Trade Center. I've heard several reports from several different officers now that that is the building that is going to go down next. In fact, one officer told me they're just waiting for that to come down at this point. Building 7 was not evacuated and left to burn because the fires were too severe, nor was it evacuated because of poor water supplies, or because the building was in obvious danger of imminent structural failure and collapse from normal office fires. There has to have been other reasons that we do not know about for its evacuation. Building 7's collapse, according to NIST, was the result of a series of accidental and unpredictable factors. Factors which did not come together in such a way as to determine the fate of the building until minutes or possibly even seconds before the building's sudden onset of failure. Based upon these facts and the lack of empirical precedence, this complete collapse could not have been realistically predicted. Yet we know from premature media reports and the textual evidence of the oral histories of the firefighters at the scene that at least 60 firefighters had been told Building 7 was coming down. Some were told this hours in advance. The foreknowledge being cascaded down to and spreading among the operational firefighters came from within the Office of Emergency Management, from New York City officials who somehow knew in advance that both the Twin Towers and Building 7 were going to be coming down. This information was also given to Mayor Giuliani, causing him to evacuate Building 7. I, I saw people jumping out of the World Trade Center. I saw some of the firefighters who I know going in, into the building. So, and we were in a building in which we were trapped for about 10, 15 minutes. Are you talking about the? You, did you go immediately to the Office of Emergency Management? No, I, I went down to the scene and we set up uh, headquarters at 75 Barclay Street, which was right there with the police commissioner, the fire commissioner, mm -hmm. the head of emergency management, and we were operating out of there when we were told that the World Trade Center was going to collapse and it did collapse before we could actually get out of the building. So we were trapped in the building for 10, 15 minutes and finally found an exit and got out, walked north and took a lot of people with us. This foreknowledge is verified in the oral histories of emergency responder Richard Zarillo, an EMT, emergency medical technician, working in fire operations who, when interviewed by the World Trade Center Task Force on the 25th of October, 2001, stated that he'd been informed by the Office of Emergency Management that the buildings, plural, were going to be coming down, and the first tower did come down very shortly after he reported this to his nearest fire chiefs and the fire commissioner. Not only are we being told that on this day the first steel-framed Class A fully fire-protected high-rise totally failed primarily due to fire, but that three of these steel-framed superstructures failed on the same day, all primarily due to fire. Coincidentally, all three owned or leased by the same person, Larry Silverstein, who'd had the incredible foresight to purchase double indemnity insurance for the buildings against terror attacks not long beforehand. In a TV interview, Silverstein said that he had a consistent routine of having breakfast and coffee every morning at 8am in the World Trade Center restaurant near his office called Windows on the World. But on the morning of September 11th, he happened to have a dermatologist appointment and broke his routine. He later became involved in the operations of the day when he claims he was called by the fire department commander to say that Building 7's fires could not be contained, to which Silverstein curiously replied, we've had such a terrible loss of life, maybe the smartest thing to do is pull it. I remember getting a call from the uh, fire department commander telling me that they were not sure they were going to be able to contain the fire. I said, you know, we've had such a terrible loss of life. Maybe the smartest thing to do is, is pull it. Uh, and they made that decision to pull, and then we watched the building collapse. The term pull it 
is not a term used by the firefighting profession. By 5.20pm, the building had been evacuated for hours. But when it was evacuated, the term evacuate would have been used, not pull it. It may just be a coincidence, but Silverstein is actually using a term commonly used by the building demolition profession. Um, sorry, do I, is this controlled demolitions? Yes, it is. Okay, I was wondering if there was someone I could talk to uh, briefly, just to ask a question I had. Well, what kind of question? Well, I just wanted to know what uh, a term meant in uh, demolition terms. Okay, what type of term? Well, if you were uh, in the demolition business and you said the, the term pull it, I was wondering what exactly that would mean. Pull it? Yeah. Thank you. Sir? Yes? Pull it is when they actually pull it down. Oh. Well, thank you very much for your time. Okay. Bye. Bye. Silverstein also appeared to know that Building 7 would need replacing at least 17 months in advance of its collapse in 2001. In a recorded presentation given in Israel, he slipped up by revealing that the first design meeting for the reconstruction of Building 7 was actually in April of 2000. And so, next thing you know, we've got the designs of a building. And the first design meeting was in April of 2000. And construction began shortly thereafter in 2002. The expert that you're about to hear from is Danny Joenko. He was considered to be one of the best high-rise demolition experts in the world. Please note his natural reaction. He was not aware of Building 7 and his reaction to the footage is unprejudiced. Zie je vanaf boven gaan? Nee, je gaat vanaf onder. Die gaat vanaf onder, ja. Toch? Ja. Ze hebben gewoon kolommen weggeblazen. Er is nagesprongen. Dit, dit is... valt anders dan het World Trade Center. Vind je niet dan? Ja, je ziet dit. De onderste verdiepingen gaan eerst. Ja, en de rest zakt er gewoon in. Dus dit is control demolition. Zeker weten. Zeker weten. Er is nagesprongen. Dit is een opdracht gebeurd. Dat heeft een team gedaan van experts. Maar dit is ook op 11 september gebeurd. Dezelfde dag? Dezelfde dag. Dezelfde dag? Weet je dat zeker? Ja. Was het zeker weten de 11e? Dat kan heel waar zijn. Zeven uur nadat de World Trade Center naar beneden viel. Ja? Can you confirm it was number 7 that just went in? Yes, sir. Um, and you were you guys knew this was coming all day. We had been had we had heard reports that the building was unstable and that it eventually would either come down on its own or it would be taken down. 